Hello and welcome back to Gary's Garage and in this episode we're going to try to fix the problem of the very wobbly drive shafts. At the beginning of last episode I was really worried that the engine in the Anglia was dead. But after sticking it up in the air uh, actually, the, right, the engine doesn't seem to be dead. A little bit of noise coming from the uh, front, maybe one of the pulleys for the cam belt. But the main issue with it at the moment seems to be the big vibration coming from the back. And with it jacked up in the air, we could see that these drive shafts were vibrating all over the place. So what I think has happened is that when they have been re-welded after I snapped one, they've just gone a bit out of alignment, there's maybe too much weld on them or they didn't quite go back together as square as I had them originally and that's just introduced some vibration. So the first thing I'm going to do is strip them down back to the bare shafts, stick it in the lathe and just have a look and see how far out they are and what we can do to rectify that. So even on just half, we're not really particularly straight, that's what uh, 0.2 millimeters each way, so 0.4 millimeters overall. And if we go to the end there, it's going to be even more. So I have some new shafts on their way, and I will remake these shafts, I think, and try to get them as spot on as possible. So for the moment, let's go back to the engine and see what the noise is about. Right, so while I wait for some bits to arrive so that I can remake the drive shafts, it's time to turn my attention to what's going on with the front of the engine. And I have fired it up a couple of times for friends and family, and both times they have concurred with my findings, which is that it appears to be the pulley that the cam belt runs around. So what I'm going to try to do is with removing as little of this as possible, see if I can get one of these cam covers off and have a look at what's going on with the timing belt. I have a feeling it might be either loose or this pulley has come loose. And we'll see what we can do, whether I can, whether it is just loose and it just needs sorting out or whether something a bit deeper in is broken. Maybe the hydraulic tensioner has failed, so it's not uh, applying the correct tension to the belt and the belt slapping around a bit. But let's pop something off, preferably without removing too much, and let's see what we can find. So I think the problem is that the central plastic cover here is, well, in multiple pieces. Um, I do vaguely remember that many years ago when we were putting this engine back together the cover was slightly damaged and there's evidence of glue on it and I'm guessing what's happened is in the last year when I've been dealing with it and lifting it up and down on the engine crane and just trying to get stuff installed that cover there has broken and that this has been pushed back and running against the pulley. I need to take the uh, bottom crank pulley off, the one that runs the alternator, because the plastic cover looks to go all the way around it, which will definitely mean that the radiator needs to at least swing out the way, so the charge cooler expansion tank needs to come with it as well. Hopefully I can just gently tease all of those out of the way to get access to it. So that's going to be the next thing I'm going to try to tackle, is see if we can finish getting the rest of this cover off after I just move some of the loose stuff and quickly fire it up and see whether that noise has gone. Because if it has, and it was just these bits rattling, then I will be very happy indeed. If it's still making a noise, then I'll continue stripping it away and we'll see what's up but the cam belt tension looks pretty good at the moment.
Okay, nothing there is anywhere near a pulley. So let's see what happens. Still a little bit of a clunk, but maybe there's a little bit of plastic gone down inside and that's just tapping somewhere. So I'll continue on getting the radiator out of the way and see if we can finish pulling off all of these front covers. <sighs> there's no easy way for me to get this radiator out of the way. I've been trying for half an hour now. So I'm just going to have to drop all the coolant and remove the radiator. Not really what I wanted to do. but idiot here did make everything so very tight and very close to each other with no room for anything so it's kind of my own fault really There we have the offending article, one broken cover. Okay, so I've got all the front covers off. And we can see where the two cam wheels on each bank are. And then there's this bearing in the middle and get to the right position. And might just be able to see that just there is a dent. So obviously that is not great. So I wonder if it's the belt rubbing up against that and going out of alignment. So I think I need a new one of those. And while I'm taking the belt off to do that, I may as well put a new belt on because if the belt's been rubbing up against it, it might have damaged it. So yeah, I think a new belt, new pulleys, and uh, we'll be looking good. So I guess I'd best order a cam belt kit. So my new timing belt kit has arrived. Big thank you to Mike at Viamoto for getting that sent out very, very quickly. And so what I need to do now is whip the alternator and the alternator bracket off so that I can get to the hydraulic tensioner, which is just down here, and then we can pull the belt off. So let's get into a timing belt change. Right, so that's the old belt off, and looking at it, it's not in bad condition. It went on five years ago and has done 4,000 miles, but with, I think, this damage here, it has started to fray at the edge. Um, so, yeah, definitely with that pulley dented, it needed doing. Um, so, I have my new stuff here. So we have a timing belt, we have a new hydraulic tensioner, two bearings, one this one here that's damaged and also the one that's down here on the tensioner. And we also have a new water pump complete with gasket. Because if you're going this far, it is a bit silly to not do the water pump because it's just there and there's only one more bracket to take off. So a nice new water pump, just in case, with the year it's been sat with basically no coolant in it, something's happened inside there, and it doesn't seem too bad, but 
for the sake of doing it, let's do it. So I'll pull this bracket off and the water pump off, which will splash coolant everywhere. Great. And then we shall start fitting all of the new bits. Um, you may have noticed when I undid the belt, these pulleys, cam pulleys, did jump a fraction. Some people, before they uh, do it, will put something in to lock them up. My dad, who was a uh, trained rally art Mitsubishi technician for 20 years and was around when these cars came out, hasn't done that. So he's always just let it go and then just realigned them as putting the belt on and that's the way he taught me, so that's the way I'm going to continue to do it. I could lock it up if you wish to do that, if you don't feel safe just letting it go and lining it up again yourself, then by all means do that. I'm doing it this way because that's the way my dad taught me. And we've done this type of engine multiple times. I've done my uh, own Legnum cam belt twice. This is the second cam belt that we've put on this engine. And they've all been okay, other than me damaging that by potentially lifting it with the crane. But, so let's get on with the rest of it. Okay, so here comes the fun bit of actually putting the timing belt on. So how it starts is by lining up the crank and these pulleys. See, this one has moved slightly, but that's not a problem. And then we turn the crank pulley one tooth counterclockwise. So let's have a, a big bar for that. And we go one tooth counterclockwise. And now comes the fun bit. So the belt goes on. And the first thing it does there is loop around the water pump. And then goes past the cam. Sensor. And this is where I need a 17mm spanner. And then it says in the manual to use a paper clip or a bulldog clip. So we do that. And we come along to the next. And we get that lined up there. And we get another paper clip on there. Then we go round the tensioner. And now we need to tweak this cam. I need to go that way a bit and it gets very springy there. So it gets difficult to hold it right on the mark. about 
This is why people say it's slightly easier to lock the cams, but I like to make sure that it is lined up when we do this. So we get onto that one. right place so let's get another take that one off We're getting close. That's a 17 mil spanner. Off the, we've come off the crank pulley. <sighs> Damn it. <sighs> yeah, this is why locking it up might have been easier. But as I said, I've never done it that way. It's always worked this way before.
换女成绩Where did that bolt go? Okay, so we're almost there. Little pulled around, put a bit more tension on. And they're all still nicely lined up. Okay, so that's the towing belt all on and rotated the engine a couple of times and all the marks line up just where they should be. So what I'm going to try doing now, before I go too much further, is start it up and see whether I've still got that horrible knocking noise. I really hope not and that it was this pulley or maybe even the water pump. So let's uh, make sure everything's clear of all the pulleys, connect the battery up and see what we get. So given that that is a new noise, I'm going to hazard a guess that it's just the water pump not being lubricated by the coolant. So I'm going to put the front covers back on, get everything basically back together and get the coolant radiator in, get it filled up with coolant and then we'll see what happens and hopefully that noise will stop. I really, really hope so. So thankfully, as suspected, that was just that the water pump was a little bit dry and I was trying to run it without any lubrication. So all good, it's running really nicely now. So what I need to do now is throw the charge cooler system back in and then I can put the flip front back on. So that's the front end, hopefully all sorted out now and no noise. 
and it's time to go back to the back end of the car or more correctly over towards the lathe because I need to make up some new drive shafts. That's so what I need to do now is take one of these drive shafts and make it into one of these. So yeah, as you can see, quite a big difference in size. That's because that's just how much narrower the anglia is. And bearing in mind that each drive shaft has that much taken out of it. So I'm going to get going with this. And What I've done is I've taken a piece of steel tube and turned it down on the inside so it's a nice snug fit. And I've got it obviously all back up in the lathe. It's the right length. So what I'm going to do is put the runout indicator on here and I'm going to just tweak it marginally and I can just manually turn the lathe by hand and I can get this nice and really, really straight. Tack it and then keep turning it and tacking it and just build up the weld little bit by little bit until it's all solid. And these little holes here are just so that I can get a little uh, you know, plug weld as well as the bead around the edge. Okay, so on the bit that's in the lathe, we've got sort of about, what, 0.02 millimeter run out. I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get that. Now I'll uh, move on to this end and get that nice and level as well. So that's the drive shafts all now made up and because I'm going to the effort of remaking them nice and straight when putting them back together I thought I would give them a damn good clean up, get rid of all of the old grease and put in some new stuff. So I will spend the next few minutes giving these a very thorough cleaning out with probably brake cleaner because it's fantastic stuff and then we can look at reassembling the drive shafts and getting them reinstalled. So with me getting very mucky and greasy, all of the CV joint components are no longer mucky and greasy. They're all nice and clean. So now I've got the fun task of putting together the two sets of shafts. So I've got everything separated out into what came from the near side and the off side. And yeah, just need to piece this all back together in the way that it came apart. So there we have it, two freshly rebuilt drive shafts. That was a very horrible, messy job, but they are now packed full of grease, so hopefully plenty of lubrication there. So what I'm gonna do now is go and throw them back in the car, and fingers crossed, that horrible vibration that we had will have gone. So that's everything put back together and the next big test is to see what happens when I fire it up and apply some load to the engine. 
Firstly, was the noise just that pulley and possibly water pump? And was the noise at the back just the drive shafts? So let's get it fired up and see what we have. So I'm pretty happy with that. I got the car up to about 6,000 RPM in fifth gear and I don't know exactly what speed that is because I've moved the speedo onto the front wheels but I think it's around about the 130 mile an hour mark and I'm not going to be going that quick in it, probably not even on a track. So that was quite a good test and there was minimal vibration. Obviously there was a lot of noise. I'm in a very confined garage with solid walls everywhere, so it's going to sound loud. But it was not shaking the whole car like it was when I tried it last time. So I'm really, really happy. Unfortunately, it is absolutely lashing it down with rain here with no sign of it letting up. And that means that I'm not gonna get a chance to go and try it out on the road. So that means you'll have to join me next time to see how it feels on the road. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. And if you like what I'm doing, then hit the like and share buttons. And if you're not subscribed and you want to see more of what I'm doing, then hit that subscribe button. And if you really love what I'm doing and want to help support me, then you can find the link below to my Patreon. Anything that you can... Uh, pledge will be really really appreciated so see you next time on gary's garage when we'll hopefully get the car out on the open road and see if everything that i've done to it still works right and it drives nicely so thanks for watching and see you next time bye, bye.